Hi, I'm Katie from What Katie Did and welcome back. Today I'm going to tell you about my best ever find from the Rose Bowl flea market in Pasadena, California. Now I told you, I know I told you about my best ever find at the Rose Bowl late last year, but this is, that was 2019 and now it's 2020, so I've definitely started 2020 on a roll. Someone commented on my videos in January that they were a little bit repetitive. So I was going to take you out on the road. I was going to tell you about my dream day in Los Angeles, uh, where I generally take Sundays off and I love to go to the Rose Bowl flea market. And I love to go to Yoga Blends, which is my yoga studio I go to in Burbank. I also like to drop by Dollar King, which is great for artwork and, you know, art accessories. And you never know exactly what you're going to find there. It's great for picking up cheap things. And also, I love to spend some time at Olympic Spa on Olympic um, down the other side of the hill in LA. So that is, that's what I do on my dream day. And that's what I was going to talk to you about today. But of course, every, things don't go to plan. So I'm afraid you're stuck with me here again when I tell you about my best ever find at the Rose Bowl Flea. At the Rose Bowl, you'll never know exactly what you'll find. So it's always best to go with it, there with an open mind. And this time around, I'd been wandering around for quite a while and I hadn't found anything good at all. I'd found a few interesting things, but when I'm traveling, I have to be aware of, you know, what I can actually fit back, what I fit, in, fit back in my suitcase to bring home, whether I need anything for the store. So it's specific things I'm actually after, although I don't actually have a list in mind. It's just when I see something, I'll know it. And this time I hadn't bought anything at all. And I was just wandering around and I saw this amazing princess coat and um, it was a teeny, teeny, tiny size, size, and I walked past it and I thought, oh, I'll film that because it's interesting because I hadn't filmed very much. So I took the time to, to film it. And then as, as I was walking past, I had a sneaky look in the rest of the stand. And at first glance, it didn't seem very, very interesting at all. It was more, most of it was um, 60s, 70s. But then as I looked through to the back of the stall, something really caught my eye. And it turns out, it, it was this amazing vintage corset. And not only was it um, an amazing vintage corset, but it was $75, which was within my budget. So I, I saw it and the owner of the stand was talking to, to a friend of hers and I was like, can I, can I have a look at it? And she's like, yeah, yeah, of course. And it's so, it's so rare to see an actual vintage corset as it were out in the wild so I was like being so precious with it and it, it was so amazing and I I couldn't believe I'd found it um but um, this this is it so this is my amazing find it's a corset by P P N corsets and what makes it really special to me is it's made out of mesh so it's obviously um, designed to be worn in um, warmer weather and you know when we talk about mesh corsets today a lot of people wear mesh corsets during the summer and the same thing the same thing happened um, back in the day when women wore corsets is they would wear lighter corsets especially in the tropics they they would um, when they went to India and places like that so this this is um, an amazing find it's a size 20, which is small. We tend to think of, you know, people being smaller in the Victorian times than they are today. But in, when you look at what the sizes that course, corsets were made in and what they sold in, it was generally the same size as we sell today. The, the off the peg ones, they um, generally were like 18 inch to 30 inch, the same as a lot of companies do today. Although in, in recent years, people have started making larger corsets as standard. So, it's, it's pretty much a standard corset. I can only think that because it is a tiny size, um, it never got sold. It might have been display. It's definitely dead stock. It's never been worn. So, so it was a really special find. And in all my years of collecting vintage pieces, I've never actually found a corset like this. So you can tell I, I was really, really excited. The lady whose stall it was is called Diane, and she's actually from San Diego. And I never realised this, but you have, a, you have regular spots at, at these shows. 
So her regular spot at the Rose Bowl is space D2. Now, don't ask me where, where you'll find space D2 because it's such a massive show, but I can tell you it's the other side of the bridge, and I've spoken about the bridge in, a, in another video. But she, she told me a little bit about the story. She said it basically came from... Um, a clearance sale, one of these container containers that they clear out, and I'm sure you've seen the TV show where they do the container clear outs and you never know exactly what you're going to buy, so you bid on the container. And this one happened to be full of um, corsets, which is which is amazing. And she she split the corsets with someone else, and then she had a buyer who took all the corsets off her, but then she found another one afterwards, and she, she phoned up this guy and said, oh, I've got one more, do you want it? And they said yes. Uh, but lucky for me, they didn't actually come and pick it up. So Diane took it to the Rose Bowl where I found it and, and scooped it up um, straight away. I was so excited and it, we, had, we had a really nice talk because obviously when you're, when you're on a stand, it's really nice to be able to chat with someone who appreciates what you do. And once, once I'd found this piece, I actually found an amazing garter belt and an amazing slip from her. So, you know, once it's nice being able to talk to people and they they say, you know, they might have something tucked away that you, that you might be interested in. So um, fr from that one coat, which I saw, I found these amazing goodies, including, including this corset. Inside this corset, it's got um, a PN trademark and it's got a cork steel protector. And this information printed on is uh, before you had labels in corsets. So this would have the size and all the information about the brand. So you, you know what brand it was. And lucky for me, it was on here because otherwise I wouldn't be able to research the history. But the cork steel protector would have been this bit here. So I can only imagine that there's cork inside. And this is the busk protector. So it stops um, the hard metal against your skin. Another thing that I is really cute is on the busk, it actually says PNN. So I'll, if I can open it, I'll do a close up of it later, but it's actually got PN um, stamped into the busk there. I did do a quick Google about PN corsets and it turns out um, it started in the 1870s and it was based in New Haven, Connecticut and it was known as I Newman and Co. So the I Newman and Co. owned the PN corset trademark and brand. And um, there's not a huge amount of information out there, but what is interesting is this corset is dated 1880. So although it's very old to me, um, this was made in the first seven years that the company existed. So they were still they were still quite newbies when it comes to making corsets with this one. Um, they carried on throughout the first half of the 20th century and then they became known as, they started making girdles and founded Sarong Inc. And the girdles were under the label Sarong Inc. And this went through to 1973. And PN, the PN um, practical front corset, that was kind of being made from 48 to 68. And then that's, that's the last we heard of it. So they, they, they're a company that was going for nearly 100 years making corsets and foundation garments and there's not very much information about about them out there but there would have been hundreds of corset companies and it's just amazing to have this this piece of history obviously there's, there's nothing very much we can do with this corset otherwise look other than look at it and admire it I did pick up a couple other pieces which I'm going to take a little bit of inspiration from I got a garter belt which has an amazing stitch detail on so I'll be looking at incorporating that but I picked up this piece simply because it is it's just so unusual to find and it's such a beautiful piece um, when I find anything good I'll be sure to keep you updated but if you do have any questions about corsets or lingerie in the meantime please get in touch and in the meantime take care